Mr. Baina here and welcome to Concept Map Lessons. In today's episode, we'll be talking about nation building. First off, we'll start with our early Filipinos. Our early ancestors were thought to be coming from the mainland Asia about 48,000 years BC. They passed through that body of water that were formerly made from ice, known as ice bridges. They come through the Philippines through the island of Taiwan. This is how our early ancestors traveled from the mainland Asia and most probably the rest were coming from the land of Africa, channeling the island of Taiwan to the archipelago of the Philippines. After the Philippines, the rest of the generation move along continuously and dominate the different islands in the Pacific. Therefore, practically, the early Filipinos are the ancestors of the Polynesian people. Like the early Filipinos, these Polynesian people are Austronesian-speaking people with about 1,268 languages. That includes the people who are living in the island of Hawaii that is depicted by the movie Moana. The movie Moana is practically the continuation of our historical blood. This is the boat utilized by the family of Moana and their ancestors. It was presented in the movie of Moana that these people are migrating from different islands to another. Literally, this might not be the real shape of the ship or vessel that they use, however, closely and similar to the ship that is found in Butuan called the Balangay, where the name Barangay is derived from it. The early settlements of our early ancestors can be found in Sulu, Davao, Sambuanga, Samar, Negros, Batangas, Laguna, Rizal, Bulacan, and Cagayan. They also settled in Mai Mindoro, where these people are actually trading with the Chinese. This is a painting depicting the trading life between the Filipinos and the people from China. Our early ancestors import from the Chinese including cast iron and porcelain. These are the artifacts of a cast iron and porcelain, the evidence of the trading with our early ancestors and the Chinese. Our early ancestors also settled in the land of Butuan. These people traded with the people from Champa, Vietnam. During those times, Champa, Vietnam is a great kingdom. And so trading is very important to their society. Our early ancestors made simple tools and weapons from stone flakes around 40,000 years BC. In other words, our early ancestors reside in our archipelago during the Old Stone Age. The method of creating simple tools and weapons by our early ancestors is through sawing and polishing of stones. Here are some artifacts that are 
from our early Filipino ancestors. These are the tools that are found in Kalinga. They also develop the extraction of medicine from herbs. Here are some of the herbs that our early ancestors were making use as a means of medicine. In other words, they now have the science about herbs and their importance to the early ancestors' health. They also develop weaving technology. Usually, weaving is done by the women in the society of our early ancestors. Similar to these women from the Cordillera, they also produce ornaments and patteries around 3,000 years BC, including copper, bronze, iron, and gold. Here are the different artifacts of the early Filipinos from the pre-colonial patteries to the Iron Age tools artifacts. They are also engaged in the cultivation of rice, which lead to the making of further agricultural technologies such as dike fields, terrace fields, utilizing water from the mountain, and the most magnificent seven wonders of the world is the Banawe rice terraces. This is one of the most beautiful sceneries in the Philippines, the Banawe rice terraces. Our early ancestors are also engaged in the extraction, the smelting, and refining of iron from iron ores. This is the indigenous way of smelting an iron ore. Our early ancestors are also best in building boats. Boats that are used for trading and for war, such as the Karakoa. The Karakoa is a type of boat that is similar to our present-day navy today. The Philippines during the Spanish colonization. Let's start from the 16th century. It is said that the first city in the country is Cebu City. But the major city in the Philippines until today is the city of Manila. This is the city of Manila during the colonization of the Spaniards. During the 16th century, the Asian shipping was opened in Manila around 1789. This Asian shipping is the bloodline of the economy of the Spanish inquisitors importing and exporting of goods from Manila to Acapulco. The Philippines export rice, tobacco, sugar, and indigo. And they import manufacturing goods. Because of this, Manila is significantly experiencing the rapid development due to this Asian shipping and world trade and commerce that happens around the 19th century. However, it also experiences economic depression way back in the 17th to 18th century. This is caused by shipwrecks and pirate attacks. This painting illustrates how pirates attack galleon trades way back then. The Spaniards 
also established schools. They also focus in reading, writing, and arithmetic. But most of the Spanish schools in the country is focused on religion. Some prominent schools are the Colegio de San Eldefonso in Cebu that was established in 1595, now called the University of San Carlos or USC. The Colegio de Nuestra Señora del Rosario that was established in 1597, now known as the University of Santo Tomas. They also established hospitals, such as San Lazaro Hospital, that was established way back in 1578. This actually is the oldest hospital in the Far East. This is the famous San Lazaro Hospital. This is a special National Hospital Medical Center for infectious diseases. An example to this is the RITM or the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. This is the RITM. Also during this time, the colonizers also established the Real Sociedad Económica de los Amigos del País de Filipinas. This is founded by the governor or governador Jose Basco y Vargas in 1780. This is one of the documents of the said institution. This society encourages the research in agriculture and industry in the archipelago. Specifically, the promotion and cultivation of indigo, cotton, cinnamon, silk industry. Now let's move on to the 19th century. This is the modernization of the capital of the archipelago, Manila. Since the introduction of steam tramway, waterworks, newspaper, electricity, and banking system. This is Tutuban in Divisoria. Tutuban is actually the old train station. There is also the presence of steam trams and tramways. This is the Manila Underground Reservoir, known as El Deposito. This facility ensures the water supply in Manila. And of course, the first and the oldest bank in the Philippines. This is the Banco de las Islas de Filipinas, or now known as the Bank of the Philippine Island, or BPI. The first known electric company in the country. The La Electricista, that is established in 1892 and the first newspaper in the Philippines, the La Independencia. There is also the introduction of the meteorological studies in Manila Observatory that is founded by the Jesuit priest of Ateneo. These are the old and the new photos of the Manila Observatory. One of the greatest improvement and development in the country during the Spanish regime during the 19th century is the educational reform in the country which started in 1863. Formerly, the Spanish schools teaching mostly religion in their curriculum now adopts higher educational courses and these are the opening of nautical or course for pilot of merchant marine. These are nautical schools. The subjects they offered are arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, physics, hydrography, meteorology, navigation and pilot. 
these are the pilot students posing for their class picture. The School of Medicine and Pharmacy is also opened in the University of Santo Tomas in 1871. There were 62 graduates but only 15 years after that it was granted by the authorities. One of the earliest faculty members of medicine of the University of Santo Tomas. The first graduates in bachelor's degree in pharmacy were only six of them, which include Leon Maria Guerrero, also known as the father of Philippine Pharmacy. The father of Philippine Pharmacy, Leon Maria Guerrero, a scientist and a politician. Leon Maria Guerrero is also known for his medicinal plant studies in the Philippines. Let's move on to the Philippines during the American period. The Americans created the civil government in the country in 1901. The American administrator in the country or the first governor general is Howard Taft. The first governor general Howard Taft. This government declared English as the official language in the country. It is widely taught throughout the entire archipelago. No wonder we are one of the world's top English speakers and we produce significant resource for the business processing outsourcing industry. There were about 600 American teachers that were sent by the American government to the Philippines. By chance, these 600 American teachers are called Thomasites because they were on board that SS Thomas vessel. This is the SS Thomas that arrives in Manila from America or the United States. The civil government allowed Filipinos to be elected as part of the legislature which happened in 1907. The American civil government disestablished the Catholic Church. Some church lands were purchased by the Americans and were paid amounting to 7.2 million US dollars to the Vatican in 1904. These lands were redistributed. Some were sold to former Filipino landowners and some to the large American landowners. The legacy of the American government that was left in the country are the following. The adoption of the government democracy, consisting of the three independent leg bodies such as judiciary, headed by the chief justice under the Department of Justice, the executive, headed by the president of the Philippines and the legislative which is headed by the senate president this is the senate and the congress the americans also established schools these are not simply ordinary schools but are the prominent schools in the country such as the philippine normal university this is the campus of the philippine normal university PNU is established for educating the natives of the country, especially in the science of teaching. The world-renowned University of the Philippines, the UP campus in Diliman, which was established to provide the advancement in instruction in literature, philosophy, the science and arts, and to give professional and technical training to every qualified Filipinos or students even abroad 
regardless of their age, sex, nationality, religious belief, and political affiliation. And Silliman University that was founded in 1901, the famous Silliman Hall. Silliman University is the first American and Protestant school. It is an institution that is founded by the Americans for higher learning in the Philippines. Protestantism is another legacy of the Americans in the country. A Protestant church that can be seen inside Silliman University. The Americans also helped the country in developing its agriculture. A view from the agricultural sector in the country. The most significant legacy of the Americans are embedded in the Filipino culture. Filipinos adopted American names such as Charlie, Anna, Francis, and Cherry. Filipinos also learned to be frank, humorous, right, and freedom. The love for sports, the pagmamano, was replaced by the kissing of the cheeks. This is an example of the famous Filipino culture in Christmas. Christmas adopting the American style. And finally, the Japanese occupation, which only lasted from 1942 to 1945. For the very short period of time in its occupation, the Japanese altered the living conditions of the Filipino people, including this great suffering, the loss of lives, including the tremendous physical destruction of the surrounding environment, infrastructure, and the lives of the people. This is the famous Bataan Death March. This death march claimed hundreds of lives of the Americans and the Filipino guerrillas. The occupation happened during the Commonwealth of the Philippines, headed by the President Jose P. Laurel. Jose P. Laurel is the President of the Second Republic of the country. The Commonwealth is the administrative body that governed the Philippines from 1935 to 1946. This is the transition period from the Spanish rule to the Americans. The Commonwealth The main purpose of the Japanese occupation to the Philippines are Number 1. The Philippines is a base for the Japanese to attack on the Dutch in the East Indies. The East Indies are the countries found at the southern part of the archipelago. Next, the Philippines is the line of supply and communication between the Japanese home island, which is Japan, and their conquered territories in Asia. Despite the occupation, the contribution of the Japanese to the country is infrastructure. They build major highways, bridges, airports, railways, and ports. Obviously, they build this for their advantage. But when they left the country, they are all usable infrastructure that benefits the Filipinos. This is an illustration on the construction of the major bridges in the country during the Japanese occupation. The Japanese also issued a fiat currency called the Philippine Peso, although most Filipinos call it the Mickey Mouse money. The Philippine Peso during the Japanese government is very similar to that of the Mickey Mouse money that is used for Disney Entertainment. Some of the cultures that we're able to accept from the Japanese are we learn the skills in bonsai making, skilled Filipinos who knows how to bonsai almost create bonsais to every type of plant, and the living of sleepers outside the door. 
look at the similarities between the Filipinos and the Japanese culture. That's all for nation building. Thank you for watching.